Hello beauties! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and if this is your first time here, welcome to Booked and Busy. So today, I'm here to bring you my most anticipated releases for 2021. We have some fantasy, mostly some romance, a couple sci-fi. So if you're interested in seeing what books I'm looking forward to in the new year, keep on watching. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is give a couple honorable mentions because these books don't have exact release dates, release dates or they're rumored to be coming out next year, but it's not guaranteed so let's just go through those the first one is jade legacy which is book three and i believe the conclusion to the green bone saga by fonda lee jade legacy starts with jade city and then jade war and it is a story where an analog of 1970s hong kong asian inspired uh urban fantasy story where jade can be used along with side mantra arts to do magic and we have these two ruling families that are uh, at odds with one another. So we got Jade Legacy. The next one is The Doors of Stone by Patrick Rothfuss, which is book three in the King Killer Chronicles. It follows the story of a man named Kavoth, who was the King Killer, and he's chronicling his life to a chronicler. That one is alleged. Another one is um, Red Rising, book six, which does not have a name yet, but it is the conclusion to the continuation trilogy in the Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. The first book, Red Rising, we follow Darrow, who is a red, and they are the lowest caste of society, and they have been enslaved unknowingly. And he finds out that his people have been enslaved because they have been terraforming, thinking that they were preparing the Earth or the or Mars for uh, human occupation, but turns out they have been living there for years. And so he goes on, gets transformed, and he um, infiltrates the highest level to like bring down society. So that's what the first book is about, but the story goes in a completely different direction in the sequels and then in the continuation trilogy so those are the three i want to just call out that don't have exact release dates yet or are rumored to come out and of course the winds of winter by pat by uh, george r. r martin is another one that like will it come out we don't really know so now we I have those out of the way we have releases for every month of the year except december actually um august only has one but these are the ones that i'm interested in right now so i have everything on my little notebook all the months and so let's just get started so a lot of these are sequels and continuation in series so bear with me okay so the first book that i want to talk about is about so bold and deadly by bridget kimmer which is book three in the curse breaker series book one a curse of dark and lonely is a beauty and the beast retelling but set in almost in the modern day so we have our main character harper we have harper and brand and harper is a young woman who has a disability so it has disability rep i think she has cerebral palsy maybe i think that's what she has but i know that she has um a physical impairment with her leg so uh, i would look into more on voices reviews if you want more detailed information about the rep but we follow her as she's whisked away to this like portal portal world where our main character Ren, who is the beast and he is trapped in his home and like all that and then the second book uh about a uh, heart so fierce and broken we follow gray who was a main side character in that book as he uh just grapples grapples with like the events that happen at the end of book one and we follow his story and then book three i think we're gonna go back to like their stories together and we're gonna get like harper and Rand and gray and his love interest so that's what I'm, I'm excited for that one the next one these are in no particular order as far as in the months go but that one's also coming from bloomsbury the second one is an orbit books book and it's from it's the mask of mirrors by m.a carrot and it comes out january 21st and this is a story where it has like dream magic we have this character who is a con artist and she is trying to make her way into a wealthy family uh so, so that she can like secure a place for her and her sister but there is tension between the royals or the upper class and then the underbelly of the city and then like a mysterious magic starts to come in and invade and like shake things up and we just see what happens with that so I'm excited. M.A. Carrick, I know, is an author duo, so I'm excited to see what they have to offer. The next one is The Hall of Smoke, and it comes out January 19th, and this is from Titan Books. So this one is a revenge story, and you know how much I love revenge. We follow our main character, who is a warrior priestess, and her power is such that she can turn bones into dust. She is cast out from her community because she refuses to kill a traveler, and while she's away her village and her people that the the town is raised and burned down and then she goes on a path of vengeance to to absolve not absolve but to um what am i trying to say when she returns and she finds out that her community has been ravaged she sets out on a quest to avenge all those who she has lost 
The next one is the Frozen Crown by Greta Kelly. This one comes out January 12th from Harper Voyager. And this one, I'm sorry, I'm gonna be looking at my phone a lot because all these synopses are like on Goodreads. So this one we follow this main character who is a princess with a dangerous seeker and she's trying to reunite her nation. This is a story we've heard before, but it does sound interesting. She became the heir to the Frozen Crown because of her devotion to her people, but her realm is facing a threat that she cannot defeat alone. And there's a mad emperor who has unleashed a horde of invading soldiers to enslave her lands. And so I I imagine this will be probably a dual POV story and there may be a little bit of a romance. So those are the three, excuse me, four books that I'm looking forward to in the month of January. So February, we have two releases that I'm looking forward to. The first is A History of What Comes Next by Sylvain Nouvelle. That comes out February 2nd from Tor Books. A History of What Comes Next is a combination of like a sci-fi thriller in the mind of Blake Crouch and it takes place in the 1940s and it says it is a blending fast-moving darkly satirical look at 1940s rocketry with an exploration of the amorality of progress and the nature of violence. Uh, it says always run, never fight, preserve the knowledge, survive at all costs, take them to the stars. Mew's family has shaped human history to push them to the stars, making brutal, wrenching choices and sacrificing countless lives. Her turn comes at the dawn of the age of rocketry. Her mission to lure this man away from the Nazi party and into the American rocket program and secure the future of the space race. So that's going to be interesting. It's an interesting setup. I usually don't like books that have anything to do with Nazis and Nazi Germany, but the concept sounds very interesting, so I'm excited. The next one is Beneath the Keep by Erica Johansson, and it comes out February 11th from Transworld Digital. This is the prequel to The Queen of the Tearling, so I'm excited for that. Queen of the Tearling is one of my favorite series that I've read. And it follows this young girl named Kelsey Glenn, who is the rightful heir to the throne, the rightful queen of this land. But she was spirited away as a child because her mother was murdered and her uncle has been regent. And her whole life he has been looking for her and trying to kill her because he wants to be the only ruler. And uh, as she comes of age, she travels back to the keep to take hold of the throne in the country and our story kind of begins from there so this is a prequel I guess to how we got there maybe follow the mom I'm not sure uh, but I'm excited to see I didn't even know this was coming out until very recently so I'm really excited to look into what Miss Johansson is going to do there March releases we have a sequel and a first book in a series so the first one is a desolation called peace by Arcady Martin which is a sequel to a memory called Empire this is like a sci fantasy book and we follow this main character who is an ambassador to this uh, space station she goes there uh, in this hunt to try and find out what happened to her partner or her predecessor excuse me because he was murdered but she has to trade carefully because she doesn't want to end up with the same fate so this is the sequel to that uh, and that's from Tor and it comes out on March 28th the second book is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark and that comes out March 23rd from Orbit Books so the unbroken terrain is a soldier stolen as a child and raised to kill and die for the empire her only loyalty is to her fellow conscripts but now her company has been sent back to her homeland to stop a rebellion and the ties of blood may be stronger than she thought luca needs a turncoat someone desperate enough to tiptoe the bayonet's edge between treason and orders someone who can steal sway the rebels toward peace while luca focuses on what really matters, getting her uncle off the throne. Through assassinations and massacres and bedrooms and war rooms, Terrain and Luca will haggle over the price of a nation, but some things aren't for sale. I'm intrigued. So moving on to April, we have uh, only one book, and it is The Dark Queen Rises, which is the sequel to Upon a Burning Throne by Ashok Banter. And this is from John Joseph Adams Books, and it is coming out on April 20th. So Upon a Burning Throne is a modern retelling of the legend of the Mahabharata. I'm not sure I, I know I'm mispronouncing that but it is the story of the Pandawa brothers and we follow this world where the there's a, a burning throne and the way you're chosen for it is that you can sit on it and it doesn't burn you. The king or the emperor dies and or the ruler of some sort dies and then there are multiple people who are able to sit on a throne and you watch as these different people vie for power and in this world. So I'm excited to get this. I have not read the first book yet but I do because the this sequel was supposed to come out in 2020, earlier this year, and I was going to like marathon that series, but it was pushed back to next year, so I'm going to wait until the uh, beginning of the year to get that to that one. So this is my only April release. In May, we have four books. The first one is Realm Breaker by Victoria Aviar, a new series from her. She's the author of the Red Queen series, and it comes May 4th from Orion Books. Realm Breaker says, who is left when the heroes fall? Corianne lives at the end of the world. Year after year, she watches her pirate mother 
uh, sail away to adventures she'll never share. So when a mysterious immortal and deadly assassin appear on Corianne's doorstep telling her she's the last member of a dying bloodline and the only one who can save the world, she seizes the chance to have her own adventure, but the world is in graver danger than she ever imagined. I love assassins, so, uh, and I really enjoyed Red Queen, and it's been a few years since Red Queen concluded, so I'm excited to see what Victoria AVR does in a new story, so that is why I'm picking that one up. The second one is the third book in a series and I think the conclusion of a trilogy and it is The Dragon of Jin Saiyang by K.S. Veloso. This comes out May 4th and this is also from Order of Books. So this is the third book in the uh, Bitch Queen series. And in the first book, um, The Wolf of Orin Yaro, we follow uh, Talion who is the queen and she, her husband has been estranged so she goes on this journey to reunite with her husband and she kind of goes on this journey to do that and things that happen there but she is like the leader of a very broken empire they're very impoverished and she is fighting to hold on to power the third book that i'm looking for in may is project hail mary by andy weir this comes out also on may 4th from balancing books and this is the same author of the martian i love the martian one of the best books i read this year so i'm excited to see um what he has next and this one uh Let's pull up the Goodreads synopsis because I can't tell you what it's about. But I read The Martian so I wanted to read this one because I heard Artemis which is his other book was not that great. So I was like, oh, I'll wait until his new thing because this is more like of the same vein of The Martian. So Project Hail Mary, it is a lone astronaut must save the earth from disaster in this incredible new science-based thriller. Rylan Grace is a sole survivor on a desperate last chance mission and if he fails, humanity and the earth itself will perish. That's all I need to know. I really love the survival element of the Martian, how he was just one person alone trying to make a way to save himself and do all of that. So um, the only thing that was at stake was his own life. And now with this one, the, um, the entirety of the earth is at stake. So I am very excited to get to that one. The fourth and final book that I'm excited for in the month of May is Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. This comes out on May 13th from Harder Children's Group. And Heartstopper is a graphic novel series about these two boys, Nick and Charlie. Nick who is, um, Charlie who is gay and Nick who think, thinks he's straight. And they meet and they become friends and then they fall in love. It is the cutest, most wholesome thing ever. If you just want something that's quick and easy like a pick-me-up, I definitely recommend Heartstopper. Into June, we have one, two, three, four books for June. The first one is The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This comes out June 10th from Orbit Books. Okay, so this is the first book in a trilogy where it is inspired by epics of India. And we have a captive princess and a maid servant in possession of forbidden magic. They become unlikely allies on a dark journey to save their empire from the princess's traitor brother. Imprisoned by her dictator brother, Milani spends her days in isolation in the Harana, an ancient temple that was once the source of a powerful magic deathless water, but it is now little more than a decaying ruin. Priya is a maid servant, one among several who make the treacherous journey to the top of Harana every day to clean Marana's chamber, Milani's chambers. She is happy to be an anonymous drudge so long as it keeps anyone from guessing the dangerous secret she hides. But when Milani accidentally bears witness of Priya's true nature, their destinies become irrevocably tangled. One is a vengeful princess seeking to depose her brother from his throne. The other is a priestess seeking to find her family. Together they would change the fate of an empire. That's exciting. The next one we are looking forward to in the month of June is For the Wolf by Hannah F. Witten. This comes out on um, June 15th, 2000, June 15th, 2021. And this is also an Orbit Books book. You guys know I love freaking Orbit. So we have The First Daughter is for the Throne, The Second Daughter is for the Wolf. This is for fans of Uprooted and the Baron and Nightingale. And it is a dark, sweeping fantasy about a young woman who must be sacrificed to the legendary Wolf of the Woods to save her kingdom. But not all legends are true, and the Wolf isn't the only danger lurking in the woods. As the second daughter born in centuries, she has the one purpose to be sacrificed to the wolf in the woods in hope that he'll return the world's captured gods. I love books about gods. Um, I'm getting more into polar fantasy. Uh, shout out to Jade. So I'm excited to see what this one is all about. The next one, the next one is In the Shadow of the Gods by Rachel Dunn. And this one comes out uh, June 21st from Harper Voyager. So In the Shadow of the Gods is by like Rachel Dunn. I don't know if I said that. But we have a first book in an epic fantasy trilogy in which a mismatched band of mortals led by violent secretive men must stand against a pair of resentful gods to save their world. 
Eons ago, a pair of gods, known as the twins, grew powerful in the world of Fatira. Under the Divine Mother and Almighty Father, exiled them, binding them deep in the earth. But the price of keeping the fireland safe is steep. To prevent those young gods from rising again, all twins in the land must be killed at birth, a safeguard that has worked until now. Trapped for centuries, the twins are gathering their latent powers to break free and destroy the parents for their tyranny. A fight between two generations of gods for control of the world and the mortals who dwell in it. Like I said, I love books about gods. I'm so excited for that. <laughs> the next one I'm looking forward to is The Witness for the Dead, which comes out June 22nd from Tour Books. And this is by Catherine, what's her last name? I don't know. But this is the sequel to The Goblin Emperor, a book that I'm very excited to read. And I'm going to wait until closer to the release date to read the first one. But I do own it already. Yes, okay, so her name is Catherine Addison. I'm not going to read the synopsis of that one because it's going to spoil the first one for you. Uh, I'm just going to apologize right now, y'all. This video is a mess just because of so many books that I have not read, do not own. So it's hard to keep the synopses of like 30 books in my mind at one time. So I apologize in advance if this video is like not as concise <laughs> as my others. All right. So in the month of July, I have three books that I'm really looking forward to. The first is Any Way the Wind Blows, which comes out July 6th from Wednesday Books. This is the third book in the Simon Snow series, which is the first book is Carry On and then Wayward Son. Carry On was one of my favorite books that I read in 2019. Wayward Son is one of the most disappointing reads of 2020. So who knows how Any Way the Wind Blows will go. This is kind of like Harry Potter fan fiction, honestly. It's like Draco Harry fan fiction, basically. Uh, and that's from Rainbow Rowell. The next one is uh, The Emperor's Ruin. And that is also coming out on July 6th from Tor Books. The Empire's Ruin is from Brian Staley. And this is a continuation series set in the world of his first series. Or not his first series, but his previous series. Which is the Chronicles of the Unhewn Throne. Where the Emperor um, dies and his children are kind of battling it out. From my understanding to do that one. I haven't read the synopsis of this one because I think it takes us in the same world. And I think it takes place after the events of that trilogy and I do have that on my shelf and I plan to read it um, because I heard really great things about that series and so now that he's continuing in that world I'm definitely going to like marathon those first three books so I will leave Goodreads links to all these books down below so if you want more information if you want to add them to your Goodreads to keep track of them you'll be able to do that if you want more in-depth synopses. Uh, and the final book that I'm excited for in the month of July is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This comes out July 6th from Knopp Books. And this is the author of Unravel the Dust and Spin the Dawn. It's a duology. I really enjoyed that one. And this is about Six Crimson Cranes is about Shiori, the only princess, has a secret forbidden magic that runs through her veins. She conceals it well, but on the morning of her betrothal ceremony, she loses control. At first, her mistake seems like a stroke of luck, forestalling the wedding she never wanted, but it also catches the attention of her stepmother. She has a dark magic of her own and she banishes the young princess turning her brothers into cranes and warning Shiori that she must speak of it to no one else. For with every word that escapes her lips, one of her brothers will die. Penniless, voiceless, and alone, Shiori searches for her brothers and on her journey uncovers a conspiracy to overtake the throne. A conspiracy more twisted and deceitful, more cunning and complex than even her stepmother's betrayal. Okay, um, honestly, I enjoy Spin the, uh, Spin the Dawn so much that Elizabeth Lamb is an auto by author for me, um, or at least check out, um, <laughs> to see what it's like because the stories are so beautiful, they're so unique, I really enjoy the way she writes characters, so I'm excited to see that. In August, we only have one book, and that is A Romance, and that is The Heart Principle by Helen Huang, and this comes out on August 17th from Berkeley. And this is the third book in the Kiss Potion series, and so first book, the Kiss Quotient we follow Michael and Stella uh, and all these books seem to feature at least the first two books seem to feature autism rep because uh, uh, one of the love interests is usually on the spectrum so in the Kiss Quotient we have Michael and Stella Stella's on the spectrum and she uh, hires Michael to teach her how to be in a relationship with a man in the second book we follow Khan uh, and Esme, uh, like a renter bride type situation or mail order bride, and he's the one that's on the spectrum, and they get to know each other and fall in love. In the third book, we're gonna follow their cousin, Quan, and his, his story. So I've been waiting so long for Quan's book because it was supposed to come out this year, got pushed to next year, so I'm really, really excited for that one. In September, I only have one book as well, and that is The Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff, and it's coming September 7th from Harper Voyager. Um, this book was also supposed to come out in 2020, but all I know is that vampires are back, baby, and I want to know more about that. 
All right, so uh, it says, From holy cup comes holy light. The faithful hand set worlds aright. And in the seven martyr sight, mere men shall end this endless night. 27 years have passed since the last sunrise, and for almost three decades, the creatures of the night have walked the day without fear. Once, humanity fought bravely against the cold blood legions, but now we exist only in a few scattered settlements. Tiny sparks of light in a growing sea of darkness. Gabriel is the last of the silver saints, a holy order dedicated to defilming Rome and church, now utterly destroyed. In prison for the murder of the vampiric king, Gabriel is charged with telling the story of his life. His tale spans years from his youth in the monastery of St. Machon to the forbidden love that spelled his undoing and the betrayal that saw his order annihilated. Most importantly, Gabriel will tell the story of the Grail, the legendary cup prophesied to bring an end to the eternal night whose location is known to a single person, a smart-mouthed teenage urchin named Dior. Their journey with a band of unlikely allies will see Dior and Gabriel forge an unbreakable bond and set the broken paragon on a road to redemption. But now the grail is shattered and with the cup of the redeemer destroyed and the last silver saint awaiting execution, what can bring an end to this undying empire? Give me all vampire books. All right, in October, I have one book, which is book nine in the series, and that is Leviathan Falls from James S.A. Corey coming out on October 28th. Uh, from Orbit Books and this is the conclusion to The Expanse. The Expanse is an epic space opera that begins with Leviathan Wakes. I've only read the first book in that series but I'm really excited for it and we're going to be hosting a read-along for all nine books so if you have not read it it's not too late it's perfectly acceptable. Um, the first story starts in ends in a way that if you've read only the first book you got a completed story so I'm not going to tell you too much more about it because each book not is Mystery of the Week like there's an overarching plot because uh, I have started the second book, but it's kind of a different issue in each book. So I can't really tell you anything about Leviathan Falls. In November, we have my last and final release that I'm excited for in 2021. And that is Jade Fire Gold, which releases on November 2nd from Harper Teen. Jade Fire Gold is by June CL10. And this book is about... It says, told in a dual POV, a narrative reminiscent of Ember in the Ashes. Jade Fire Gold is a YA fantasy inspired by East Asian mythology and folk tales. Epic in scope but intimate in characterization. Uh, it is a cinematic tale of family, revenge, and forgiveness. In order to save her grandmother from a cult of dangerous priests, a present girl cursed with the power to steal souls enters a tenuous alliance with an exiled prince bent on taking back the dragon throne. The pair must learn to trust each other but are haunted by their past and the true nature of her dark magic. So those are all the books I'm looking forward to in 2021. Let me know down in the comments what is your most anticipated release um, because I'm just so, so many good fantasy books are coming out next year. I just cannot wait. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, mm, leave a crane or bird emoji in the comments for Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye-bye.